AT&T and Hello Sunshine want to help inspire and mentor the next generation of female storytellers. I've never been more passionate about anything in my entire life. <laughs> you just feel their excitement and their energy and really see the potential in their futures to become filmmakers. In order to have successful female filmmakers in the future, we have to start empowering them today. We're taking them through the ropes of filmmaking and making sure they're prepared. Learning how cameras work, how lighting works, and sound works is such a, a privilege. We're going to take them on a slew of locations to film powerhouse women across the industry. We have to change the storytellers in order to change the stories. The goal of the program is to get these women empowered and confident about being filmmakers. always had a dream to let other girls into this process. Everybody deserves a chance to tell their story. And um, no one should tell your story for you. I'm really excited that you guys are learning and you're just starting, but I hope this is giving you building blocks that are gonna carry you through a lifetime. Thank you for being here. This week, we are interviewing a bunch of different fantastic women who have worked in this industry to create a documentary about the women in the film industry and get the message out there that we are here. For me, life is one of those things that like never really makes sense until you're somewhere and then you look back and you're like, oh yeah, everything led me here. It like, should have made sense all along. You know, now when I look back, I kind of see I'm like, oh yeah, I was always writing, I was producing plays. I love the act of kind of like bringing people together to create something. If there's anything that kind of like makes my heart you know, sing, I think that's the thing that, that really does it. My first job was working internationally. I got a job working for a nonprofit where actually we were going into different countries around the world to train local writers and producers to create content in their countries. You know, I think we're always looking for that, those shows and those movies where it's like, wow, we're, we're gonna bring this voice or this character to the forefront that has that hasn't been, you know, I think reflected in mainstream media. So that way, hopefully, you know, eventually we're like, oh yeah, it's just natural that everyone in, you know, our culture is reflected in the media, in the mainstream, and valued as kind of, you know, these lead protagonist roles. So I really like to direct, but everyone says that, but I'm, I, I'm interested in it because it's important to have stories that aren't told and have voices that aren't heard and have everything like brought to light. Film is a language and you have to learn that language in order to you know, be able to communicate with an audience. I think something we have to be conscious of is that women have to bring other women with us. And I feel like that's what something that was major for me was Ava DuVernay. I was up for jobs and you know, it was always this thing, well, she doesn't have any studio experience, she doesn't have studio experience. And I was like, well, how am I gonna get studio ex experience if you don't give me this? <laughs> job and then she had a job and I was just like yeah I want her to shoot that for me yes I had to be talented I had to have the experience but there was still one person looking out and saying you know what I'm going to hire this person who hasn't gotten the chance yet and I feel like women we have to do that for one another and it's something that's important women people of color we have to always be looking out for like okay who can I bring with me for the past couple of years, like I've really wanted to be a cinematographer, and so seeing someone else who's a female, a person of color, who you know went for what she wanted to do and is is where she wants to be, is like really exciting for me because it's kind of like the person who did it. So if she did it, so can I. My name is Corey Kaplan. I am a production designer in film, television, and in the old days, music videos. Production design should be the design of the entire show. And I will help them decide whether we should build things, whether we should look for locations. I, as a production designer, would work with wardrobe, so we coordinate our looks. I work with props, and props is anything that the actor touches in the scene. And my job is to help coordinate that. Being a production designer allowed me to use every bit of my art studies, whether it be sculpture, whether it be photography. I was a dancer, so that's movement, that's performance, that's entertainment, that's understanding what an actor has to go through. And what does it take to bring a character alive? What will make their home theirs? 
So it allowed me to really uh, be an artist and develop all my traits. So that's how I knew I wanted to be a production designer. And I never turned back. I'm a creative weirdo. That's how I describe myself. I have a lifestyle brand that really centers around interior design. So we're kind of like the HGTV of YouTube for the millennial generation. As an entrepreneur, I have to be self-motivated and I have to kind of pep talk myself, knowing when to stop work and take a chill pill and also knowing when to stay up till 2 a.m. finishing something. As a female especially, I think that we are nurtured to be nice and sweet. Those were always words that I heard growing up. Oh, you're so nice, you're so sweet, you know, and that kind of makes you a little bit more meek. You can be both kind and assertive. You can be sweet and dominant. You know, there's, there's a lot of combinations that us as females can be. You just kind of have to find it. I was five years old when I knew I wanted to be a makeup artist. And I used to watch those old black and white Universal movies over and over. And from the time I was five until I was 12, my next door neighbor was a makeup man. You know, I would just say to her, oh, Mr. Latito, I want to do what you do when I grow up. And I always got the, yeah, sure, kid. Because back then, women were not makeup artists, you know? Everybody says, what, what was your favorite movie to work on? It's like saying, what's your favorite child? You know, you kind of have a hard time doing that. Edward Scissorhands was amazing. I loved working on the pirate films. They were so much fun. And then, of course, I did all the Hunger Games films, and that was really amazing. Every type of makeup that you could ever learn or do was on those films. Tattoos, injuries, you know, whatever it was, we did it on those films. That's what you have to do to be a film makeup artist. You got to be able to do it all. I have been lucky to have many, many uh, mentors in my career. I was working um, as a temp at, as a temp secretary. The boss of the advertising agency was a woman. That was the first time I saw like a real strong boss lady. I loved her and uh, she was very encouraging to me. She was really the one that gave me the opportunity. She put me on set for the first time. She sent me on location for the first time. She um, taught me everything I needed to know. One tangible piece of advice to enter this field is simply the desire. It's available to you. It's open to you. There's thousands of incredible jobs. It's an uh, industry that takes care of its own. Uh, you get to travel the world or you can stay home. You can do anything from sitting on a computer and, you know, making computer graphics to running a camera to running a studio. I started my post-production career labeling tapes literally labeling tapes. I made sure that those labels were perfect on those tapes and I worked hard, uh, moved my way up, ended up at Paramount and I've been here ever since. When I have interns, when I have interviews with PAs, when I call people for different positions, I want everyone to apply it. But I do definitely look for when, when there's an opportunity to hire um, a woman in a position. Traditionally, it's all been men. So in my job, it's like my responsibility to make sure that women are equally represented. I am the very first female head of post-production for a major motion picture studio ever. Being in that position, I think that a lot of people, they've never had to deal with a head of post that is a woman. So I think it was different for them. I can tell when they're uncomfortable and you know, I just chalk it up to they're just not used to it. It's just something new for them, and it's just something that they'll have to get used to. One of my favorite things that she said was how, in regards to um, women coming into this industry and sort of people not being used to it, she said that they're just going to have to get used to it because we're coming, and I think that's pretty true. I think seeing and working with everyone here, I'm excited to see their talent, and I know for sure that we're going to be seeing them in the future. I'm from Australia. I grew up in Brisbane, and I used to stare out the window in English class, thinking I wanted to make films. What the job of a music editor is, is to work with the director to make sure that 
his vision for the music for the film is realized and hopefully exceeds his expectations. There's something very special about going to a scoring stage. To sit there with a live orchestra and have the privilege to flip the pages and read the score as they're going, that's really special. You know, I really have given a lot of thought to all of you girls since I've been asked to talk to you. I kept thinking about myself as a 16-year-old girl. It goes like that. And it wasn't that long ago that I, f I f see myself in all of you. When you all introduced yourself, yourselves to me, I kind of felt a bit teary because I felt like I connect with you. I feel myself in you. She had one passion for film, and she knew she wanted to work in sound, but she had no idea what even a music editor was. And now she is one, so it was really inspiring because it like shows that there's so many doors and so many opportunities and there's stuff that you will be that you don't even know exists. As an actor, people always kind of try to keep me away from the business people. And I had to take all those people away and say, no, no, I want them to call me, I want them to talk to me, I'm gonna sit in meetings. You need to know behind the camera, in front of the camera. You need to know how movies make money. You need to understand the economics of it as well because when you walk into a room, you need to understand it is a business. You know, you still have to be responsible. People are giving you money and it's your responsibility to make their money back and hopefully make a profit for them. I think, you know, it's so important that people tell their own stories. You can't get things right or accurate if you've never walked a mile in someone's shoes. I was really excited to, to have this filmmakers camp and invite kids who don't necessarily get those opportunities to say, no, you can really be here. And there's lots of different ways into this incredible incredible business and and I truly believe that stories change the world. It's the power of film um, to transport you and also make you understand other cultures and lives. So I'm excited that you guys are here to, to learn how to tell your own stories. It was really great to be able to see that my hobby as filmmaking could become a career and it was really interesting because I didn't know a lot of women in the film industry and now I do. Right now I'm feeling a lot more confident. I have I feel like I have a path. Some jobs are looking for more women, and a lot of crews uh, are all women, which is like really cool. And the one consistent thing that I've heard from like every single woman we've interviewed is just take every single job that you can until you can build yourself up. Hearing so much advice from fantastic people, knowing that, oh yeah, we can do it. You know, they did it, so why can't we?